Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about methods, specifically methods which can be used with series. Now, if you don't remember what series is, it's one of the fundamental data structures provided by Pandas library and is widely used for data manipulation and analysis in Python. Now series is just a one dimensional labeled array or just to put it in a simple terms, it is just an object with a one column data in it. Now it can hold data of many data types like integer, floating point numbers, strings and so on. And there is a list of methods that we can apply to any series that we create within Python. Now to be specific, I'm going to cover 25 most important methods that we can use in a Panda series. So without any further ado, let's just quickly jump into our Google Colab notebook and see methods in action. Before we work on methods within Panda series, it's important to import pandas, obviously, right? So I'm going to import that import pandas as PD. Now let's create a series. Okay. Now series in pandas can be created from a list as well as can be created from a dictionary as well. So we're going to see both of them. So let's say we are creating a new series here by the name of score. And I'm going to write PD dot series. Now remember Python is case sensitive. So if I write a small s here in series, this will not work. Okay. So you write PD dot series, open up a bracket. And now I'm going to use a list to create this series. Okay. So let's just enter a few numbers. So now my score series is created. If I enter score here, it will show me a one dimensional array of data. Similarly, you can also use a dictionary to create a series. So let's create another series here, score one. I'm going to write PD dot series, open up a bracket. And since we are using a dictionary, I'm going to open up a curly bracket here again, and I'm going to enter a key value pair. So now the score one series has also been created. And if I enter this, this is going to show me a one dimensional array with the assigned value, which is the name here as indexes. So by default, when we're creating a series, since it's a one dimensional data, you will also see a index column here. So when we create a series, Python by default assigns an index to it. So if you see in this example, it has assigned an index starting from zero. But since in this series, we have assigned a custom index to it, it has used those values instead inside the index column. Now remember, because this is an index, we're going to have a duplicate entry here. Okay. So even if I try, let's say with a different number here, but the name index is the same. If I enter and then run score one once more, it has automatically removed that duplicate entry. It has only considered a once the a that it considered is the last item, not the first one. So it has simply removed the first item and instead plays the last item there. So keep this in mind. Now, once you've created your series, let's jump into top 25 most important methods that can be used with a Panda series. The first category is in the information category. So the method is score dot describe. So the moment you want to use a method, this is how you use it. You apply a dot after your object and then the method name and then open bracket and closing bracket in most of the cases. I'll show you where it is not the case. Okay. If I enter this, it's going to show you some brief statistics of that particular series, uh, which means count mean standard deviation minimum, and then some percentile value and then maximum values. Okay. The second type of method is data manipulation method. Okay. So the first one in that is head. So I'm going to write score dot head and then enter. It's going to give me five rows from the top. Okay. Now, since my data was very short, obviously it does not make much sense, but when your data is, let's say a couple of thousand row items, the head method would help you get a preview of your data. You can also give it a custom argument within head. So let's say you only want the top three rows. You can write three here and run this. It will show you the top three rows of that series. Now opposite to head is you can just write it like this and it will show you the last five items. Next one is unique. Okay. When you want to identify the unique values within your 
uh, series, you can run this and it will show you only the unique values. If you remember, we had a duplicate item here, which is 95. So it has simply removed the duplicate item and showed you the unique items in this array. The next method is when you want to actually get the count of unique values instead of the actual values. So in that case, you write score.n unique and then it will show you that it had five unique values. Next is when you want to sort the values within your series. So you can just write score.sort underscore values. It will sort everything in an ascending order. Also, in case you want the sorting to be in a descending manner, you can just write ascending equal to false and then it will sort everything in a descending manner. Next method in the data manipulation category is sorting the index. So instead, if you want to sort the index value, so right now we have an index value starting from zero. Let's say you want to sort that in a descending manner. You can do that as well. Uh, so you can just write score dot sort underscore index ascending is equal to false and it will just simply sort your values based on the index not the actual value next is when you want to filter your data filter your series based on certain values so for that what you can do is just write score dot is in and what it does is it check if a series contains a specific value or not okay so to do that you just open up this bracket Inside the bracket, you open up a square bracket and enter the value that you want to search. So let's say 95. And when I run this, it will tell me that we had 95 in the zero position and also in the fifth index position. Next category is when you want to run a method based on each row item. So let's first create a function here. You all know how to create a function. We have covered this in previous videos. I'm going to create a function called user func and give it a parameter and inside the function I'm going to simply say return the x value divided by 100. Now after creation of function let's use the method. The method that we're going to use is called apply and what it does is it enables you to run any custom or inbuilt function within python on a particular series. Okay so I'm going to run apply method using the user func function. As you see, each item in my score has been divided by 100 as what we required in that function to do. Now the next category of methods is aggregation methods. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. The first one is sum. So score.sum, it will simply sum everything. Then score.mean, score count this will count the total number of rows that we have score dot value underscore counts this will basically give you the count of rows that you have for each value so as you see 95 was appearing two times in our data so that's why it's showing us two next is score dot min which shows you the minimum value score dot max which shows you the maximum value we also have score dot idx min what it does is it gives you the index number of the minimum value okay so if you see the minimum value was 44 and 44 was in the index number 3 okay so that's why it's giving us 3 here also score dot idx max will give you the index number of the maximum value now this also works with key value pair as well. So when you created a series using a dictionary and you use this idx max, it will show you the custom index number that you created. The next category of methods that we're going to cover is missing data handling. So for that, let me just create a series with a missing value. So I'm going to initiate this series once again, pd.series. And within this series, I'm going to enter a few values. And at the end, I'm going to write an additional entry by the name of none. Okay. It automatically places a blank row within your series. So once we have done this, we have a null value in our series. So to identify none value, just write score dot is null and then open up the bracket and it's going to check whether we have any none values in your series. And as you see, it has identified at this position, we have a null value. 
Next, if you want to fill that null value with any value, then you can use score dot fill na and then enter the value that you want to fill. So right now I want to fill zero in place of the blank value and it has done just that. The next category of methods is category of string operations. Now before working with this, let's just create a series which has certain strings in it because right now we only have one series which has number values in it. So let's create a new series. I'm going to call this name. Now, if you see, I have deliberately entered values in uppercase and lowercase. This is because we're going to see few methods which will cater to that certain problem. Okay. So I've created this series. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is lower. Let's say you want to convert all these values into a lowercase. You can just write name dot str dot lower. Okay. Open up the bracket, close it. And then all of these values will be converted into lowercase. Similarly, you have for uppercase name dot str dot upper. This is going to convert everything into an uppercase. Now let's copy paste this series once more here and execute this. Now the third method that we're going to cover is contains. So let's say you want to find certain characters within a series. You can do that. And what you can do is name dot str dot contains and within brackets you write the value that you want to find. So let's say I want to identify uppercase A. Okay. And when I run this, it will tell me that I have a uppercase A in only one position here. However, if I write a smaller case A here, it's going to give me a different result. It's going to tell me that at this position we have lowercase a data. The final category of methods that we're going to cover is called date time. And let's create a series by the name of SC date. And I'm going to initiate this series. Okay, I have now initiated the SD date series. However, the dates that you see here are currently not in a date format. Right now, these are considered as string only. So in order to convert this into a date format, what we're going to do is we're going to say SD date is equal to PD dot two underscore date time and then supply the SD date series once more. Okay. So now all these values that you see here has been converted to a date time format. Now we can run our methods, which covers the date time operation. So the first one is to get the year value from your dates. You can do ST date dot DT dot year. Okay. Here you do not need to enter brackets. You can just simply run it and it will give you the year extracted from each item of that series. Similarly, I can also extract month. So dd dot month. And finally, I can also extract day as well. dt dot day. So these are few important methods that you can use with a Panda series. I'm going to end this video for now. In case you think that I missed any method, then please let me know in the comment section. And if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. That would really help me out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.